This is the third video for Module 3. In this video, we're going to talk about the resistance distance, the Kirchhoff index, and the node weighted distance between nodes. The resistance distance was introduced by Klein and Randick in 93. Klein and Randick are well known in the field of chemical graph theory. So it's understandable that this measure was based on the physical properties of molecules. Recall that the Laplacian matrix is the matrix that we obtain by subtracting the adjacency matrix from the degree matrix. We're going to introduce notation here where G minus U is the Laplacian matrix without the U row and U column for a node U. The reason we're defining this is because that is how the resistance distance is calculated. The distance between two nodes, U and V, where the distance is the resistance distance, is we find the Laplacian without row U, without row V, and without column U, and without column V. That resulting matrix, we then find the determinant of it, and we use that for our numerator, and then for the denominator, we remove just row U and column U and find the determinant of that matrix. And the ratio is called resistance distance. So let's look at an example. We have a small network with four nodes, and we have two of the nodes labeled one and two. That's going to be our U and our V. And we want to find the distance between, that is the resistance distance, between nodes one and two. So first, let's look at the degree matrix minus the adjacency matrix, which we know as the Laplacian. Then if I were to remove the first row in the first column and obtain a 3 by 3, then remove again the second row in the second column, then the 2 by 2 that I have would be the matrix that I now want to find the determinant of. So, again, if we take the Laplacian and we remove the first row, first column, second row, second column, and we have the 2 by 2 in the bottom right-hand corner, we now want to find the determinant of that 2 by 2, which we can see is 4 minus 1. To find the de denominator, we're just going to look at the resulting matrix if we remove the first row, first column. And that gives us a 3 by 3. And to find the determinant of that 3 by 3, we could expand along the first row. Expanding along the first row, we'll have 3 times the determinant that we just calculated, which is 4 minus 1, or 3. So we have 3 times 3. Then, alternating signs, even though it's times a minus 1, it'll be plus 1 times the determinant that we get removing the uh, row and column where the second position is, and so forth. It's a little hard to say, but I'm assuming that you know how to find the determinant of a 3 by 3, and you should get uh, what we have in the denominator here. So 9 minus 3 is 6, minus another 3 is 3, so we have 3 over 3. Or the distance, the resistance distance from 1 to 2 in our example, turns out to be exactly 1. There's an interesting relationship with the resistance distance and the graph spectra. 
You may recall from linear algebra how to find the orthonormal eigenvectors. And so applying linear algebra, we can see that the resistance distance can also be found using the graph spectra or the network spectra and the Laplacian eigenvalues in a given order. We won't be looking at this in detail. This is just a side note since the linear algebra background varies uh, among the students. In an earlier lesson, we saw that the Wiener index was the sum uh, by summing each row and then adding those sums. And so we can do the same thing if we have a matrix whose entries instead of are the standard distance, but are the resistance distance. So if we have a distance matrix based on the resistance distance, then we can define a new index, and this is called the Kirchhoff index, where we find the row sums using the resistance distance matrix. The last thing for this lesson is we are going to modify the idea of distance if we include a weight assigned to each node. So for example, if we look at the three nodes that are weighted 10, 22, and 35 respectively, the distance without considering the weights of the nodes from the node weighted 10 to the node weighted, say, 35, it's a distance of 2. However, what we would like to do is say the distance from node U to node B is the sum of the weights along the shortest path, including the terminal node. So the distance from the node weighted 10 to the node weighted 35 would be 22 plus 35, or a total distance sum of 57. So as another example, I've changed the weights. I've labeled the nodes according to their degrees. Now, what is the diameter and radius of this network? Well, the diameter, you may recall, is the maximum eccentricity, so we have to calculate the eccentricity values for all of the nodes. If we look at the nodes with weight 1, then um, what are the nodes of weight 1 on top, and what are the nodes with weight 1 on the bottom? What is the distance between those two nodes with weight 1? As we traverse the path, we add the weights as we go. So we would have 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1. So the distance is 8. I claim that as you check all of these, that 8 will be the maximum value for the eccentricity values. Also, if you look at the node weighted 2, that's also adjacent to the node weighted 3. That one has minimum eccentricity value because its eccentricity value is 4. So the diameter is 8 and the radius is 4. If we base our distances on the weighted node distance, We'll be talking more about incorporating node weights into some of the standard definitions in network science.